for the 2018 Winter Olympics in South Korea. The U.S. has already won gold, adding to the excitement as we enter the first full week of competition. Joining us right now from South Korea is eight-time Olympic medal winner for speed skating, Apollo Ono. Apollo, thanks so much for joining us this morning. We're so happy you're here, especially with the Olympics in South Korea, the political tensions between the U.S. and North Korea at a high, and there seems to be no way to avoid politics during the game. What's the mood there? Kick us off with what you're seeing there uh, after the first full week. Sure. So I, I had the pleasure of, of participating in the opening ceremonies. I've walked in in my first opening ceremonies in 2002, which was incredible and life changing. Uh, and then now to have it on the other side to view and see young athletes walking with old was was an incredible sight. So the mood here is it's been quieter, but it's been still very electric. Uh, I'm in the coastal cluster, which is in an area called Gangneung, and I do all the broadcasting for short track speed skating and where I believe. And I'm a little bit biased, but I think it's the hottest ticket in the Olympic Games, and it seems to definitely be having the the loudest crowd. So overall, we see. Uh, you know, athletes preparing and getting ready, and I think the U.S. chances at continually getting on the podium are very, very strong. Very, very strong. I mean, speed skating is obviously very strong, one of the first sports out of the gate. Uh, what are the highlights for you when you look at speed, when you look at the games overall? I personally loved um, the, the skating, the couple skating. That was the, that was the first thing that I watched. But the speed skating is getting a lot of uh, a lot of conversation too, right? Yeah, and I think, you know, South Korea has a long-standing history with just being extremely competitive in, in the Winter Olympic Games, particularly in short track speed skating. So we watched the men's 1500 meter win their first gold medal, which was a South Korean athlete. Uh, the U.S. athletes were very close, uh, but they've got more races on the way. And uh, speed skating has been a huge phenomenon in, in Holland, in the Netherlands, where you know, you, the long track speed skating is going on right now, and there's a sea of orange jackets, as you see, when people are watching, and they've got their chanting, and it's an incredible sight. So for those who don't have the opportunity to be here live, I always urge them to tune in because the games are obviously only once every four years and very special and to support our athletes as much as possible. Apollo, much has been made. Uh, Shani Davis has brought a lot of attention to speed skating, um, maybe for the good and maybe not so much. Controversy over the coin flip to decide who would carry the U.S. flag during the opening ceremonies, but also he was upset in the Sochi Olympics about the Under Armour suits that the skaters were wearing. Has his um, exposure helped speed skating and, and made people want to watch it even more. Well, I don't know if it's it's a, given it more exposure, but um, as they say, sometimes any exposure is good exposure. Speed skating is a relatively small sport, although you know primarily being dominated by the Europeans in long track and by the Asian countries in short track. Uh, I welcome the more attention that we can get to the sport. It needs to grow. I'm obviously a big fan, um, and hopefully we get more support. And I think that starts not only from the grassroots level, but uh, along the way. And uh, anytime we can get more cameras out there on the long track or short track speed skating, I'm happy. So one of the things, Apollo, I'm, I'm really curious about your opinion. Being out there in 2002 versus today, a lot of people are saying that the global opinion of the United States has fallen quite a bit in the last, or since the last election. Do you feel that there's a difference tension between the United States athletes and the rest of the world, or you still think that we're having really positive relationships? Well, I think the Olympic Games are, are quite unique, right, in, in every respect. Uh, I competed and walked in my first opening ceremonies, which was 2002 in Salt Lake City, post 9-11, in which tensions were arguably at the all-time high, and our country needed to come together and, and unify and, and unite towards one common goal and theme and, and team. And that was the Olympic Games. And I think unilaterally, it really helped a lot of athletes come together and also those who were watching from afar. And so those, those Olympics were very special to me. Uh, we live in a different time now. Uh, you know, the, the games are held all over the world in different parts. And I think it's, it's important for all of us to recognize the symbolism of what the Olympic Games really is and having fair play, athletes competing on one uh, ice surface or one um, you know, two-week period in which the world has its eyes on a particular location and for once we can somewhat take a break and compete in peace and unity. So that's the, that's the thesis and fundamental 
idea set behind the Olympic Games, which is sport, but also a chance for everyone to participate. Either they're rooting for their own countrymen or countrywomen, or just participate by actually physically being here. But make no mistake, we do live in a different time, and there are highly sensitive subjects and, and issues that are happening. Um, it's just my belief that we concentrate heavily on the positive aspects of what the Olympic Games can bring, uh, and that's what makes me smile the most. Hey, Apollo, this is Mike Murphy. Uh, first of all, congratulations on an amazing career in the Olympics. Uh, but I notice you're wearing a Hershey's jacket. And, uh, you know, I love the sponsorship behind the athletes in the Olympics because we only see the athletes every four years, typically. So I was wondering if you could tell us a little bit about that sponsorship and uh, if Instagram or social media is playing a big part sure. in that as well. <clears throat> yeah, well, you know, as you can see, I am wearing Hershey's. Um, I've got the Hershey's Gold Bars right next to me. Uh, Hershey's has been the quintessential American company to really support our athletes. And, and you know, as you mentioned it, uh, the athletes' programs in the Olympics are not subsidized by the government. So the athletes are needing to rely upon these types of partnerships and campaigns in order for them to thrive and also just give life uh, and, and excitement back into the Olympic Games sometimes and, and bring a new different type of twist. So, you know, the, the great partnership with, with Hershey's is unique. Uh, every single time an Olympic athlete, winter Olympic athlete wins gold here, uh, who's from the U.S., uh, all of the Americans who want to participate can also win gold as well by going to the Hershey's Facebook page and yeah. downloading that coupon for a free gold bar. So there's many different idea sets and marketing initiatives that are utilized to just create more engagement, I think, with the community. All right. We, we were going to talk about uh, Bitcoin. I know you're, <laughs> you, you, you use Bitcoin, right? Real quick, Apollo. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm a fan. A fan of, of blockchain and crypto, yeah. All right. We will leave it there. Apollo, thanks for joining us. Apollo Ono joining us there.